creating open api using yenswag as i mentioned before we have got two approaches when you want to expose documentation for your web api project one is using the swashbuckle that we have seen in the past two sections and next is using yenswag this is just another package that is going to be extremely similar to that of swashbuckle let's see about configuring and installing yenswag in your web api project in this section let us look at some of the topics we are going to cover in this section first we need to see how to install yenswag to your web api project just like swashbuckle the package is going to be quite similar there should be one package and we need to install to your web api project let's cover that in the install yenswag lesson once you are done with that the next step is to configure the yenswag to your web api projects yeah, again it's going to be just a couple of simple statements to add to the request pipeline and the configure services let's cover that in the configure yenswag lesson finally we have the swagger ui in this lesson at swagger ui we will see the list of commands that you need to add so that you can expose yenswag through the swagger ui commands let's cover that in at swagger ui lesson so let's get started with the first topic of installing yenswag to your cms.webapi project. In this lesson we will look at how to install yenswag to your webapi project. Note that this is an alternate to swashbuckle that we have used in previous sections. As part of installing yenswag it involves three different steps. In step 1 you will install the yenswag package manager. Just like the way you had installed ASP.NET Core dot Swashbuckle related packages, to use Yenswag in your ASP.NET Core Web API project, you install the respective package. Once you have done with the step one, you go ahead and configure Yenswag in your Web API project. You do this so that you can configure the middleware as well as the request pipeline for your API endpoints. Once you have done the configuration part, the final is to add the Swagger related details such as generation of Swagger document and adding the Swagger UI to the request pipeline. Once you have completed these three steps, then your web API project is ready to generate the documentations in the open API format. Let's see how we can do all these three steps one after the other. Next, let's go on and install yen Swag package to our web API project. To do this, I'm going to use the nuget package manager extension and click on add package and followed by giving the text as yenswag. Once you enter the term and then search for it, again similar to the way we have seen before, it's going to show you multiple packages. We have so yenswag.core, annotations, netcore, generation and so on. What we are interested in here is this specific extension namely yenswag.aspnetcore. This is going to provide you all the details required to generate the documentation for your web API project. Let's select that and select the most latest version followed by the specific project. Once done, it's going to get added. Let's do the restore. You can see that we have added yenswag.aspnet core into our current web API project. As a next step, we need to go and configure this in our current web API endpoints. Let's see how to do it in the next lesson. Step 2. Configure Yenswag In this step, let's go ahead and configure the Yenswag that was installed to our web API project. Before going further, I would like to stress about one specific point. Here we get the warning that there is an ambiguous between the usage of ASP.NET Core, the usage of use Swagger. The reason being we have both Swashbuckle as well as Yenswag added to our project. So this creates an ambiguity. So I have made this because I want to show you how to use Yenswag at the same time Swashbuckle as well. But in a real time world, you are going to use either Swashbuckle or Yenswag. So for now, for this demo, what I'm going to do is I will just comment out the part which is related to Swashbuckle so that you can see it as a reference when you are seeing this code. So to do this, first I'm going to the CS project. We have added the package reference of Swashbuckle ASP.NET Core. Let's comment it out and then go back to startup.cs. Here we have added it using add swagger gen. So let's go and comment that part as well. And then we go to the configure method and then comment out the couple of lines that we added to request pipeline additions. So once we have done this, then it should be good. 
okay it looks like we missed it let's comment out these parts as well okay so this should be good enough so then check the warnings so we don't have any warnings so later if you want to use a swashbuckle then you can uncomment out those lines of course at that point you need to comment yen swag this is just for understanding the usage of both these packages now having removed the swashbuckle related code let's go and configure yen swag in this application so first step we have already done we have installed the package yen swag.aspnet core the next step is to configure in the configure services method remember that we had used add swagger gen and then swagger doc in the case of swashbuckle in the case of yen swag it's going to be very similar the only difference is the corresponding function name or the parameter that is being used in case of yen swag otherwise the functionality remains the same like you are going to pass the same set of titles versions descriptions and so on let's do that one after the other first to add we need to use services dot add open api document you use add open api document method to add yen swag to the service collection once you do this then it's going to expose all the api endpoints in the open api document but we don't want to stop there we want to include more details as much as possible just the way we did for the swagger similarly we had used swagger doc i am going to use a related term for this let's start with the document name remember that in the case of swagger we had used v1 as a document name in the case of swashbuckle but in the case of yen swag you need to explicitly mention the document name using the document name property let's give the value default as v1 just version 1 next to add the api meta details such as the versions descriptions license and the contact details you need to use post process so this is going to hold all the metadata details of the api so for this we use the lambda expressions and we define the method just like the way we did before the only difference being all these are exposed as part of the doc variable here so doc dot info dot contact license terms of service title and version so all these are exposed in this specific parameter called info so we need to pass all the details one after the other using this specific parameter let's start with the version as v1 next we have doc.info.title is going to be cms open api next let's enter the description for this info dot description let's copy it from the previous one open api specification for cms okay next let's add the license informations doc dot info dot license equals new you can see that in the case of yen swag it is from the namespace yen swag dot open api license let's do this here we are going to pass just the name for now we'll keep it as mit next we have doc dot contact informations that is going to be part of info dot contact this is going to be part of yen swag dot open api contact let me bring it up okay just like the way we have done before i am going to add only the name and the email part so let's do that okay so this should do the initial settings for this so we have added all the basic details such as the document name and the meta details such as the version title descriptions and so on so this completes the part of configuring the configure services and the next step here it do do is to add the yen swag to the request pipeline so for this we go to the configure method let's do it app dot use open api so this is going to expose your n swag endpoint to the request pipeline 
Let's build the project and see whether it's going to generate the JSON file that represents the open API representation of the documentation. Let's check it out. So the project has been built, but looks like we have got one error. Okay, the reason being this namespace is no longer required because it was used as part of Swashbuckle. So we can comment it out, then build the project again. Okay, let me run it directly. Once it is built, let's go and check whether the documentation has been created properly or not. So we have hosted it under localhost, the port number being 5001, followed by swagger slash v1 refers to the document name, followed by the actual open API document. So if everything is configured properly, then the swagger document should get generated at this path. Here we can see that the documentation has been generated properly. We can see also that the version being used is the YenSpec. We have the open API version as 3.0.0. We have the info section that contains the metadata, list of servers, list of paths, course, individual courses, students, and we have the different components that includes schemas. Note that one minor difference that in the case of YenSwag, it has generated the servers tag, but the same was not generated by default in the case of Swashbuckle. So the point I would like to stress here is that although YenSwag and Swashbuckle are two different methods, there are some differences when it comes to the actual generation of the document. Of course, the core logic or the core documentation is not going to change, so you don't need to worry about that. There are some additional details such as some validations or some additional informations that might be different between Swashbuckle and YenSwag. Just keep that in mind when you are working with either of these packages. So once we are done with generation of this document for the open API for the current CMS, the next step is to configure for the Swagger UI. Let's see in the next lesson how you can add Swagger UI using YenSwag in your CMS project. In this lesson, we will look at how to add Swagger UI to the Web API project using YenSwag. The step is going to be very similar to that of the Swashbuckle that we have seen before. So to add it, we first go to the configure section and we have noticed that we have used add app.useSwagger in the previous case. In the case of using YenSwag, you need to use app.use swagger ui3 this command is going to add the swagger ui to the request pipeline notice that we had one more version namely swagger ui you need to note that this particular command has been deprecated so you need to make sure that you use only the version namely use swagger ui3 once you have added this let's go and build the project and see what happens in the case of swagger ui So once the project is successfully built, let's go to the Firefox and see what is the output. Just like the way we have seen before, the Swagger UI document is going to get exposed at the URL slash swagger slash index.html. This is the default path. Of course, you can go and change this path in the configuration settings. Here we can see that the Swagger UI has been successfully rendered using YanSwag. We can see the path of the document as swagger v1 slash swagger.json that refers to this specific document. This has been rendered using swagger UI. So we can see all the metadata details at the top, the server details that was explicitly generated by yen swag package. And we have the resources, courses, followed by the list of endpoints, followed by the schemas. So using yen swag, you can do the similar way of generating the open api document along with the swagger ui so with this we have completed using yen swagger to the web api project as you can see that it is very similar to that of swashbuckle right because you have just added a couple of lines by installing the yen swag package and then we inserted to the startup.cs and the yen swag document has been ready so the steps involved in using yen swag is extremely simple and same as that of swashbuckle now you might be having one question whether to use Swashbuckle or YenSwag to your project. To be frank, it's going to be a personal preference because various companies has different policies such as they might have some existing web API projects where they have used this Swashbuckle before. In such case, you don't have choice. You can just go ahead and use a Swashbuckle. If you are going to start from scratch, 
then you can pick either swashbuckle or yen swag currently Swashbuckle seems to be the most popular option among all the API developers because it has got good support and it provides various feature sets. So Swashbuckle is a good option. In case you want to use Yenswag because it provides some additional details or you want to stick with Yenswag for specific features, you can still do so. Because the core documentation is going to be the same in the case of Swashbuckle as well as Yenswag. So pick the choice of which package you want to use and get, get started with documenting your web API projects. Let us summarize some of the key points you had learned in the section, creating open API using Yenswag. In the first lesson, namely install Yenswag, you learned that you need to use Yenswag.ASP.NET Core package to be added to your web API project. This is going to provide you all the required details to expose the web API functionality through the open API document. In the next lesson, configure Yenswag, you will learn to configure using configure services and the configure method. Specifically, you need to use add open API document to add the Yenswag to the service collection. You had used post process parameter to pass the open API metadata details. Next, in the configure method, you had used use open API to add the yen swag to the request pipeline. So using these two commands, you are able to generate the open API documentation. Finally, in the lesson add swagger UI, you used app dot use swagger UI three command to add the swagger UI to the request pipeline. With this, you are able to use the open API commands in the swagger UI format. This is able to see all the commands generated with the documentations in the neat UI format. So, so far we have seen to how to use Yenswag as one of the package along with Swashbuckle as another package to generate these open API documentations. In the forthcoming sections, we will see how we can enhance these open API documents to add additional details. Those are going to make your life a lot easier because they are going to give you more helpful hints and comments throughout the documentation process. Let's look at one such tool called API Analysis in the next section.